Despite teacher shortages and underperforming classrooms, Appleton, Wisconsin Public Schools decide it's time to spend money, time, and energy focusing on, wait for it, hiring more teachers of color. They may be different races, Appleton, but they all have the same bogus degrees in education. I'm Dr. Duke, she's Katie, and this is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello everyone and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show, the only program that keeps you educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. Today we're talking about a 16-year-old boy who was banned from school after visiting a shooting range with his mommy. Plus a new campus video finds students at George Washington University support canceling college loan debt, but not their parents' credit card debt that helped them pay for college. Their justification is really quite interesting. But we start in Wisconsin, where a school district says the key to becoming more diverse and inclusive is recruiting my not minority teachers. Okay, wait, wait, this is the, the level of thinking at a public school in Wisconsin. The way to become more diverse is to hire more diverse people. Outstanding that our kids are in the hands of these schools. So in Appleton, we uh, we have the story, and, and they're wanting to recruit minority teachers because all we care about is race, class, gender. So they think when they say diverse, they mean in terms of you know race, class, gender. Uh, so they're going to look at the school districts throughout northeast Wisconsin um, because they've had a big struggle. But in Appleton specifically, they say overall across our country, the number of people enrolling into courses to become teachers has dropped, which is alarming. Uh, this is from uh, Say Yang. It says it's even more alarming that we have very few teachers of color. And Yang is one of the very few teachers, uh, minority teachers at Appleton West High School. And uh, she's saying that the, the district is working hard to promote representation among staff and students. Uh, I am a part of the district's Achievement, Community, and Equity oh, Committee. Yeah. The district has one of those committees, of course. Of course. And we really put an emphasis on being more culturally responsive. Yeah, the fact that Appleton School's performance is continuing to sing. The fact that our kids are graduating with very little skills and a lot of politics. The answer to the problems of Aff Appleton Public Schools is let's get different looking teachers. As I said at the opening of the show, what good does it me help rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic? The Titanic is going down and so you got to make sure the orange chairs and the green chairs and the yellow chairs and the blue chairs are all equally represented before they end up at the bottom of the ocean. Who cares what race the teacher is? And you also pointed something else out, right? That at a time when fewer and fewer people are enrolling in education, that means even fewer people of color are enrolling. You act like this is a bad thing. Given the train wreck, if I may mix my disaster metaphors, <laughs> given the train wreck that American public schools have become, doesn't it suggest a higher level of intelligence by minority my potential minority teachers to say, I'm not getting on this train. I'm going to go find a job that actually pays real money. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to crash and burn like they will. And in addition to them developing this new diversity, equity, and inclusion department, or um, they've developed that, a new diversity, equity, and inclusion department. That's in addition to them having that other committee already. So this is what Appleton is spending their time on doing, forming departments, forming committees, all in the name of, hmm, maybe if these teachers physically look like the students, then that will make us diverse. This That's is, This is answer. like having a, a, an old house. An old house that you've let go to pot. It's completely dilapidated. It's falling down. The, the shutters are all rotten. The timbers are falling off. The roof is collapsing. And you're spending $30 billion of American mo taxpayer money every year changing the way the mailbox out front looks. Oh, wait, let's maybe if we, instead of a stick, uh, a box on a stick, what if we built a little, t put some tires around it and make it look fancier? Well, what if we actually built a brick mailbox? What if we continually change the color? of the mailbox. That's going to help the house. So Yang uh, and the people at the school, but Yang specifically says, I think it's beneficial for all students, not just students of color. It's important for our Caucasian students, because they're not a student of a color anyway, That's exactly uh, right. to see that everyone appreciates diversity. It's even more important, it's more important for our students of color to see people who are mm. like them. And that education is important. Where, and you can be successful. Where have you ever heard Yang? Yang? Where have you ever heard any of these Appleton school districts apologizing to the moms and dads that we didn't teach your kids how to read? Ooh. Where do you see any? Can you name another Appleton uh, school administrator who's ever been in the news saying, we're going to work our hardest to up your kids' math scores? No, 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 no. That doesn't matter. See, math, math is secondary to making sure that we would rather have kids suck at math 
but have a minority math teacher. Oh, yeah. Then actually have a qualified math teacher if that teacher happens to be, what's the word? Caucasian. Caucasian. Yeah, so everyone's aware. Appleton School District, uh, the minority population is about 20%. And just a little anecdote here. Um, I actually know a Hmong man. Who's Say a that sixth, again. Say that three times. A Hmong man? A Hmong man. Hmong man. Hmong man. Okay. A man who happens to be Hmong. Yes, who uh, owns a successful business in Appleton and graduated from the school district. And he actually put a thing out on Facebook saying that when he was in school, yes, he experienced racism he, every day. But he also does not want the focus to be on segregating these kids because he could see it happening where all of a sudden the Asian kids get taught only by the Asian mm -hmm. teachers. And the, those, what was it again? Ca ca Caucasian. Caucasian. Caucasian kids only ca taught by the Caucasian teachers. He said, why are you doing this to them? How about we teach them to read and write? Well, this is the consequence of the kind of neo-socialism that's taken over the country, right? It doesn't matter whether the teacher's effective. It only matters what the teacher looks like. The superficial characteristics of this teacher, the mailbox, so to speak, is what we will focus all our time on. And with, if the house itself collapses, we don't care. Because we've accomplished our mission, which is sociological engineering children, not educating them. This is true. And then we see what happens out in Colorado when a school, instead of teaching a, a student, decides to ban that student from the classroom, all because he decided to go to the shooting range with his mother. So this happened in Colorado. A 16-year-old boy is now banned from his school because he went to the shooting range after school. Justine Myers is the mom, and she picked up her son, Nate. They went off to the shooting range, and Nate put a picture up on Snapchat right. um, showing that they were going to go shooting. And by the time they had gotten back to their house, the cops showed up, unbeknownst to them as to, you know, what's going on. And uh, basically the cops had said, oh, well, we received this complaint and, you know, we want to talk to you about what's going on. Well, they found that it was simply a mother-son outing and that they were training the gun. They're training how to shoot the guns with legally, legally owned firearms. So the police said, hey, they've done nothing illegal. They're in their rights. Done. We seem fine. And then the next day happens, and at Thompson Valley School District, that's where Nate is a junior, at Loveland High School, Loveland High School in Loveland, Colorado, they actually left a voicemail on Justine's phone saying uh, that a report had come in claiming that Nate was a threat to the school mm -hmm. and he could not return until further notice. So right away, mom calls the school, says, hey, what's going on? I'm trying to clear this up. They didn't want to hear it. They said they not only refused to provide her with any more information about this so-called threat, they refused to provide Nate any of the schoolwork that he was going to miss. So you can't get educated. You're a threat. Get away from us. Well, not providing him the schoolwork is actually it's probably, probably doing him a favor. True. But understand what you have happening here. Notice the, the implications of this, that a local police officer who investigates this entire situation yeah. and finds out that not only were no laws broken, that these, this family was perfectly within their rights, a, a number of constitutional rights to do what they did. The school wants no part of it. Your professional investigation, your constitutionally based professional investigation as a law enforcement enforcement agent carries no weight with us. Not only are we going to ban your kid by the phone, by a phone message, we're not going to allow him to work for home. We're going to shut down his education because he did something, even though he legally had a right to, that your social and emotional educational program at Loveland High School doesn't like. We don't like our children in their spare time, in their free time, to do responsible things like learn how to fire in a gun with mom present means you have violated our social emotional norms. We talked about this in the last program for yesterday. Social emotional learning. This is a perfect example of that. That what is we're really upset about here is that you're doing something sociologically that you may have a right to do, but it violates the ethos and the emotions of our faculty, of our students, whoever it was that called and complained. And even when the authorities tell us it was perfectly okay, you still censure the kid. So what happened then, the story continues, is a, quote, threat assessment hearing, that's what they're calling it, was actually scheduled for the next day. And it was a seven-person panel, and it had the school administrators, counselors, teachers, and even law enforcement. It's a star chamber. Yeah. In a kangaroo court. Basically. So, but in enough time, within that very, by the next day, the story had already gone viral about and this. And national. And, well, that's what. Virally mm, national. That's. You old man, that's what going viral anyway. Ah, story went viral. Get off my lawn. And so the school actually had to backpedal themselves. So they had this assessment, which should, I guess, when they normally do it, takes an hour. It was all of five minutes because they kind of got caught with the tail mm -hmm. between their legs there. But upon completion of the hearing, uh, Nathan was given the right to come back to school. And he did that. 
But according to uh, the mom, her son endured a significant taunting upon his return with students calling him, quote, a school shooter. Mm -hmm. So immediately that's because that's what our kids hear about. Yeah. And the mockery was bad enough that Nathan begged his parents to be homeschooled. And who's bullying the kid? The school's bullying a kid, the administration's bullying the kid, the other students are bullying a kid. Why? Because a kid did something in his spare time that is 100% legal, legal, 100% admirable in terms of safety and being monitored and responsibility. This kid is learning all sorts of traditional American values, but he's been bullied from top to bottom. And the only way, and the fact that you have these star chambers, you literally have a panel of seven panel who are seven. going to investigate. Again, this is, these aren't lawyers. These are, these are radically progressive school officials. This is not a, anything else. It's a kangaroo court. It's a kangaroo court being held on a, a univer, on a school campus after the real courts and authorities found nothing wrong with this. There should be no such star chamber. There should be no such kangaroo courts. And the kids and the teachers and the administrators who collectively participated in bullying this kid for doing something perfectly legal should pay a price, but they won't. What they'll say is any 16-year-old who feels the need to shoot guns is a bully. That's their argument. And nothing I've seen here has backed them down from that at all. All right. Well, let's uh, lighten the load just a little bit here because it's that time of the year. Kids are back on campus. You had your first week, and stupidity is it's a bound. So Cabot Phillips of Campus Reform, anytime he comes out with one of these videos where he goes around and interviews students, it's the delight of my day. He decided to go to George Washington University to talk about Senator Bernie Sanders' idea to cancel st- student debt. We know all the 2020 Democrat candidates. Basically, they're trying to get the woke generation's vote by saying, well, cancel your debt, man. Um, and so he's, Cabot asked, okay, Bernie Sanders says, yes, cancel student debt, but what about canceling credit card debt? Because Sanders is kind of wishy-washy on it. He says he doesn't support that, but in his quote is actually, you want to buy something, you pay for it. Bernie. Anyway, so Kevin went and he asked, you know, what do the students think about this? Should we cancel student loan debt and credit cards, one or the other? And uh, this is what they had to say. Student loan debt forgiveness is one of the hot button issues right now for 2020 election. There's about $2 trillion of student loan debt in America right now. Candidates like Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren are saying the government should forgive that debt. Would you support an idea like that? Oh, absolutely. Loan forgiveness policies are really... Good. Student loans are like a really big problem and a lot of college students are like facing a lot of like tough issues so I would support it. It's so much money that like we can't pay it off like with some of the jobs that we want in the future. And higher education is part of living a dignified life and then if you want to be part of our society that that's part of the social contract and you should your taxes you should be okay with your taxes going to that. Would you also support the idea of buying out uh, credit card debt in America? No because I think that's something that people do to themselves where like you buy things even if you know you don't have enough money. So my favorite ones, there's a couple, but the boy who said that's part of the social contract and you should be okay with your taxes going to that, he has no idea what a social contract is. He heard it once in maybe one of his philosophy classes, political philosophy classes, maybe, but he's agreeing to it. There's a social contract that says you have a right to be educated until you're 27 years old and you should be okay with your taxes coming to me. Let's flip that around. Let's wait till this kid gets a job and tax him at a much higher rate and say, in the name of the social contract, you should be okay with your tax money going to pay off my credit card debt. Let's see how you feel about that. Yeah, the, my favorite girl, though, uh, she's, when asked about college, canceling college debt, she says, it is so much money that we can't pay it off with some of the jobs we want in the future. <laughs> so she's like, yes, cancel my college debt. Yeah, so think about this. <laughs> the job I want will not allow me to pay for the loan I took out. So you should allow me to have the job but not have to pay the price. Yes. That's what that's ex- pretty much what we understand here. Yep, and by her. the way, ladies and gentlemen, thanks let's thank this young lady because she did more to expose the stupidity of all these Democrat socialists like Bernie Sanders and AOC and the rest of them. That stupid comment requires no further investigation, no further comment. It is the kind of thing that should be obvious even to a middle schooler, right? That I want what I want and if I can't afford it, I should have it anyway and not have to pay for it. That, my friends, is the damningest damning thing in all of this. But she went on then because her response for, well, okay, if that's true, we're gonna cancel your student loan debt, what about credit cards? And she says, well, no, you buy things even if you know you don't have enough money. She said, one helps your future. So she's trying to say that the you, going to college helps your You future. buy things 
even though you, you don't, don't have, have enough, enough money, so that's, your that's bad. But, but I buy an education, even if I don't have the money for the education, and I know that the education will never let me make the money to pay it back, that's okay. Bernie said, she, is, is, you, did she have... Uh, did she work for him? Yeah. Uh, did she? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know. She probably There's got to be something going on here. Is this the, the love spawn of Bernie and AOC? Bernie. Oh Something's going on is. here. But Interesting. Out of the mouths of babes. Out of the mouths of babes comes not wisdom, but stupidity in this generation. Listen to what she said, and then every time you hear the chattering nabobs, every time Elizabeth Warren screeches something with her tomahawk, every time Bernie Sanders and his eyebrows living in his million dollar mansions Pudding. tells you this, right? Every time AOC with her, I'm not even gonna go there. Every time AOC talks about why this has to happen. Hear the voice of that young woman and understand how utterly, sordidly stupid this is. And understand also that it's not just these college kids who are spouting it because it's Bunny Sanders mm -hmm. and it's Elizabeth Warren spouting it at them to put it in their heads. So it's not just a millennial being an idiot. I will point out millennials, a bunch of them are idiots, a bunch of them are <laughs> But it's all the generations, you, so don't just... You left out the most important cog in the machine. Bye. You've got the lab, liberal politicians, you've got the idiot students, and you've got a whole oh. faculty lounge full of academic Elizabeth socialists. Elizabeth Warren. Ex her, ex she right? Was. Elizabeth Warren, she was uh, Barack Obama. These are the kind of yep. faculty lounge liberals who are teaching this kind of garbage to kids that young. I guess that'll do for Tuesday. As always, That'll do, pig. That'll do, pig. That'll do, pig. That'll do. As always, please share this episode and subscribe to the free audio podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, and everywhere else. Visit drdukeshow.com. Subscribe for free by clicking on any of the platforms that you see on the top of the screen so you can be on the crazy train with both of us. Crazy train? Crazy train. Dunna. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dunna. 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 And that's it. God knows that's it. We'll be back tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time for Freedom Project. I'm Dr. Duke. She's Katie. And until next time, my friends, stay educated.